Hi class, today I'm going to talk about protein synthesis and show you how to do the practice problems. But let's review quickly first. Hopefully you watched the video last week about protein synthesis and two processes that make it up called transcription and translation. So to quickly go over that, all living things make proteins. And they do that by a process called protein synthesis, which is also known as the central dogma because it happens in all living organisms. And it, it involves two processes called transcription and translation. In a eukaryote, the DNA is found in the nucleus. So if we look at this picture, here's the DNA in blue. It's in the purple nucleus. First, a process called transcription happens. It involves an enzyme called RNA polymerase, where the DNA is temporarily ripped open, read into mRNA, which is called messenger RNA. Hopefully you remember that there's three types of RNA, mRNA, rRNA, and tRNA. mRNA is messenger RNA. That's the copy of the DNA code that's going to leave the nucleus. Then it goes out to the cytoplasm, which is where the ribosomes are located. Ribosomes are found on the rough ER or free floating in the cytoplasm. And ribosomes are made out of rRNA, along with some protein, and their job is to build proteins. So they're going to read the mRNA and build a protein. But first, before the protein, you have to get polypeptides, which are chains of amino acids. So that's going to happen in the cytoplasm, and that process of the ribosomes making a polypeptide is called translation. Therefore, transcription happens in the nucleus. It's DNA to RNA. And then the RNA to polypeptide, eventually to protein, is called translation and happens in the cytoplasm. So if we zoom in on the DNA and RNA so we could actually read the bases, here's the DNA, which is double-stranded. We know that A's and T's and C's and G's are the base pairs. And hey, I got my t-shirt on showing that. So DNA, A's and T's, C's and G's. If we rip the hydrogen bonds open, we could use one side of the DNA strand called the template strand. The template strand is the side that's going to be used. And then the side that we're not going to bother with is called the non-template strand. So the enzyme RNA polymerase will use the template strand and find the complementary RNA nucleotides. In DNA, A's and T's and C's and G's go together. But in RNA, A's and U's and C's and G's go together instead. So as the enzyme is reading the DNA, it's replacing U's for T's, in essence. And here's the strand that's actually going to be made. It's coming looping around here. And this is the mRNA strand that's made during a process called transcription, DNA to RNA in the nucleus. The RNA is going to leave the nucleus and do a process called translation in the cytoplasm at the ribosome. The ribosome will read the RNA, and it reads it kind of like you read a book. And the words that it reads are called codons, and every word is three bases. So you could see that a codon is every three bases. And then the next three, and then the next three, and the next three, et cetera. So these are all codons. Every codon, which is three bases, represents one of the 20 amino acids. So this codon represents methionine. This codon represents threonine. This codon represents cysteine. And the question that you should be thinking is, how do you know what amino acid is it? Well, there's a codon chart that looks like this. And I will explain how to read this in a moment. And there's also a, same ver a similar version of it that looks like this. Most students prefer the circular version, but the square chart version also exists. And if you know how to read it, you know which amino acid is going to come next in the polypeptide chain. So here's your homework. That it's your exact paper that you're supposed to do this week. And I'm going to do the first one with you so you could understand how to do protein synthesis. Both processes include transcription and translation. What I'm going to give you is part of the DNA. So we know that DNA is double-stranded. There's two sides to it. And if I give you one strand, you should be able to figure out the complementary other strand. So A's and T's, C's and G's. So one side is called the non-template strand, and one side is called the template strand. 
The reason for this is that when RNA is made, we use the template strand, which is missing right now. So we have to figure it out. So you're, I'm gonna let me zoom in a little bit and let's put down the DNA template strand. So anytime that you see a T, A's go with that. Anytime that you see a C, A's and C's and G's go together. When you see an A, we still have T's because we're still only dealing with DNA. This is not RNA yet. And when you see A's, you put down T's. So go ahead and finish all the way down, A's and T's, C's and G's. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do transcription. Transcription is when we go from DNA to RNA. And when we do that, we have to use a DNA template strand. It's the strand that RNA polymerase reads in order to make it. And the reason for that, which we're not gonna go into detail is, is because of the anti-parallelness. So to do this, let's do A's and U's, C's and G's. So in RNA, remember there's no T's. So when the enzyme reads A, it, you think T, but we don't have a T, so we have to put down a U instead. C's and G's are still the same. When you see a T, A's still exist in RNA, so we could put down the A's. But anytime that we see an A, we have to put down a U instead. And so you could finish going on the line and make your mRNA strand. All right, there we go. So you just did transcription, which happens in the nucleus. Now we have to finish up with translation, which happens at the ribosome out in the cytoplasm. So to do this, we need to know one very important thing. The very important thing is that the ribosome always starts at the same point. And that same point that it always starts at is called the start codon. And the start codon is always the same thing, which is AUG. And AUG always is the amino acid called methionine. And so if you don't remember this, you will not do very well in the homework problems. You always have to start at AUG. You don't start at the beginning of the mRNA, you start at the first AUG. So I'm gonna go down the strand and find my first AUG. I like to put a box around mine. And then after that, I'm just going to separate into codons, which are three bases at a time. So now we're going to do the ribosome's job as translation. So it's going to start at the AUG and read this codon into an amino acid. Now anything before the start codon, you just ignore. So forget that it's there. So in order to understand AUG, now I told you it's methionine, so I could write methionine here. But in case you didn't know that, you have to use a genetic wheel to figure it out. So if we look at this genetic code wheel, what we have is that we're going to start in the center and we're going to work our way to the out, outermost circle. So start in the center of the circle and work your way to the outside. That's how it works. So here's the first letter in light yellow. And then in, in this medium color yellow, that's the second letter. And then in the dark yellow is the third letter. Now, the first one is AUG, so here's A, and that means I'm only working in this quadrant, and then I have to go use one of these as my second letters, right, the ones that are touching the A. The second one is U, so I'm gonna come down here. Now, I can only use these letters that are touching the U, and the third letter is G, which is right here, so AUG, there's your methionine. And that's why we're gonna come over here and write methionine. My next codon is GCC. So let's go back to the wheel. And if we start in the center, here's G, here's C, and C. G, C, C, and it stands for alanine. So come back here and you're gonna write ala for alanine. And then go to A, 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 which stands for lysine. So I'm gonna write down lyse, L-Y-S. And then U, C, G. And I'm going to show you on the, this version instead, so you can see the difference. So we have UCG, so in the box form we have first letter on the left, second letter on the top, third letter on the right. So if we start with U, that means that we're going to start in this row. 
the second letter is C, so we know that we're in the second column, and the third letter was G, so we're in the fourth row of the second column. So there it is, UCG, which stands for serine, and we're gonna write S-E-R right there. Then we have C-C-G, so here's C, C, G, and they all intersect right here, and that stands for proline. So I'm gonna write pro there. And then let's go to UAA, and I'm gonna go back up to the wheel instead, because I like that one a little bit better. And UAA, UAA, it says stop. So there are three things, UAA, UAG, and UGA. Those three codons are called stop codons, and that just means it's the end of the polypeptide, and that the polypeptide will break off and fold together with other polypeptides then. So you could write stop there if it makes you feel like you have to, but there's no more amino acids, and this is our very short polypeptide chain, and that's what the ribosome does. And then it will move on to the next mRNA and do the same thing. So a couple other things as you uh, do your practice homework, is that sometimes I do put the start codon right at the beginning. So sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't happen until halfway down. So you have to find the first AUG. Anything before the AUG, you just ignore. When you hit a stop codon, you stop. So that means if there's leftover letters after the stop codon, you just ignore them. Anything before or after the start and stop codon, you just ignore when you're making your polypeptide. Okay. Also on the bottom, I do give you some challenging, the two last ones are more like challenges to see if you could do them, where I give you the mRNA and you have to work, give me the DNA and the polypeptide. And then there's one that you have the polypeptide and you have to figure out what the mRNA is and then the DNA is. So this is a really hard one. That's primarily because there's more than one answer. There's multiple answers to this because some amino acids, most of them, have multiple codon combinations. So as long as you pick one that stands for alanine, it's correct. So that's why you could have multiple answers. I really want you to be able to do the three on the top. So if you could do the three right here, you're good to go. But the last two, if you want a little bit more challenge of a challenge, you could try those. So I hope that was helpful. Email me with any questions, and I'll see you soon. Bye.